Hello everyone, my name is Bradley and this is SumSup, a channel on how to survive in the online jungle. Now, in 2009, an Austrian artist named Michael Marcovici presented to the world the most intrinsically valuable art piece to have ever been created. The installation was named, very adequately, One Billion Dollars, and it represents 12 standard pallets on which buckets and bundles of hundred dollar bills are stacked. That amount of money would probably just about fit onto a 20 foot shipping container. But why am I telling you about this? Well, according to the US Identity Theft Report, losses from identity theft amounted to $712 billion last year alone. That is, 700 containers filled to the brim with $100 bills. To transport them, you'd probably need an entire handy sized vessel. And today, I'm going to teach you how to keep your money off of that ship and safe in your pocket. So back to the US identity theft report. According to IT Group's researchers, the coronavirus pandemic has directly led to a twofold increase in personal data fraud. Now, I suppose a significant increase in the number of unemployed people and additional social programs to support the population attracted the attention of cyber criminals here. People who lost their jobs were happy to grab attractive opportunities to earn some money off the internet. And equally, there were many who applied for stimulus checks online. And here, many were taken advantage of and were subsequently exposed to the most common kind of cybercriminal scam. According to statistics, 34% of cases of personal data theft are related to the substitution of a social security number. For my fellow non-American viewers, a social security number is a nine-digit unique number that every US citizen has. This number is used for tax accounting and pension calculations. SSNs will be required when applying for a new job, and they'll also be required at the bank when opening a new account, applying for a loan or renting a house. If you live in the UK, like me, it's basically a national insurance number. Now, the widespread use of social security numbers for identity verification has a downside. Scammers can actually find out your number by digging through your trash or stealing mail from your mailbox. Bank statements, drafts of contracts and landlord's notes could quite easily uncover your social security number or your national insurance number. And therefore, security experts like me recommend that you should always carefully destroy any SSN or NI related papers. Dracaris. So why are scammers hunting you for your social security number or national insurance number? Well, firstly, it's so that scammers can change their identity or the identity of their paying customer to hide closet skeletons from a would-be employer. Imagine that Joe Valerievich Blogs had a criminal record for financial crimes. It's unlikely that he'd get a job at Barclays Banking, even as a cleaner. But using your SSN, an attacker might be able to get a decent position and possibly commit new crimes using it. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. Now that exact thing was done by Anthony Lamar Taylor. In 1997, he stole Tiger Woods' social security number, and for more than a year, the famous golfer did not even suspect that the fraudster managed to issue a copy of his driver's license and get a $17,000 loan. Now these loans were obviously not paid, and this attracted the attention of Tiger Woods' accountant. The police subsequently quickly found the fraudster, and now he will spend the next 200 years behind bars. To prevent the repetition of such a story with your social security number, close access to your credit report. If a criminal tries to get a new card or open a new account using your number, he or she has not a chance, because no bank will deal with a person without a credit report. Now, when you decide to get a new loan yourself, you'll have no problems opening access to your report. A stolen social security number can ruin your relationship with the IRS. In the best case scenario, the fraudster's employer is going to report this person's income to the Internal Revenue Service. When you file your tax return, IRS employees will have questions about why you hid part of your income. You also have to prove that a completely different person used your number. In the worst case scenario, a fraudster may actually try to defraud the IRS themselves. For example, they might try to issue a fake income declaration on your behalf. Now, the trick here is to get the government to reimburse fictitious income tax. To receive the payment, they'll have to use an account that has no ties to you whatsoever, but it will be extremely difficult for you to prove that you're not involved in the scam in any way, shape or form. To protect yourself from SNN-related tax fraud, file your income declaration as early as possible. This basically increases the likelihood that the fraudster will attract attention by specifying a number that's, well, already been used. And if you receive a letter from the IRS, with questions about earnings that you did not receive, do not delay the matter. Immediately report suspicions of social security number theft. In 2020, the use of stolen SSNs to receive unemployment benefits has become, well, especially popular, I'd say. 
And sometimes scammers manage to arrange such payments in several states at once. To notice such a crime in time, you ought to regularly check the operations on your insurance account, so make sure to do that. And most importantly, never ever give out your SSN to suspicious sites. Scammers often try to fish out your number by promising a huge prize to a random visitor or forcing you to specify it to receive, I don't know, a valuable gift, right, or a ticket of some kind. Congratulations, you won. Congratulations, you won. Congratulations. Also, try not to use banking websites either. They're relatively easy to fake and they can actually be used to get your personal data. Use mobile apps instead. Do not store a photo or a scan of your SSN card or national insurance number on social networks. Let me explain why. Social networks are much easier to hack than your bank account, right? And if your account is hacked, the number may actually get onto the black market. Treat the data of your newborn children in the same way. In 2017 alone, more than a million American families have been confronted with child identity theft. Identity theft in total cost them $540 million in direct losses. For example, there's this case with Kimberly Reed from Seattle, and she was surprised to learn that her two-year-old son is not only taking his first steps, but is also earning a decent amount of money. At least, the IRS certainly has questions about the kid's income tax. I'm only 12. I can't be held legally responsible. Hmm, good point. Unfortunately, in almost 20% of cases here, children become victims of their parents, guardians, or relatives. And about 60% of children who have become victims of fraud know the perpetrators. Often children trustfully disclose their data to friends on social networks, or sometimes they're lured by cunning or the threat of violence by familiar teenagers, right? By the way, uh, 987 4320 that's my social security number. No, that's your PIN number. No, my PIN number is 3674. Bingo. The digitalization of school and medical documents has become another channel for the leakage of such data. As the result of a negligent attitude to information security, child identification data often gets leaked to the World Wide Web. So to protect your child, teach him or her about the real dangers of the online jungle. And do that from an early age. Do not forbid online communication, but explain in detail that the strange attention of a network friend can actually threaten them. Unpleasant surprises can also be waiting for you in the hospital. The theft of medical identity is something you should be concerned about, and it's becoming more and more popular. Moreover, in this case, it's not just your wallet that's at stake, it's your health too. Let me explain. Medical identity theft is the use of someone else's identity to basically obtain medical services. The danger to your health is that diagnoses, extracts, and the results of examinations of fraudster can get into your medical history. And this happened to a New Yorker actually named June Smith. And one day she visited a doctor and he stunned her with this incredible news. Tests showed that June was pregnant. However, June was in no hurry to please her husband, Tom, with this news. The fact of the matter is that they were both over 70 years old. There could be no question of a pregnancy whatsoever. Now, Medicare specialists joined this investigation quite quickly, and they found out that tens of thousands of dollars went to pay for non-existent doctors in fictional hospitals. Now, to detect this kind of fraud in time, I would suggest carefully monitoring your medical history. Any incomprehensible tests that show up or requests from other hospitals are a serious reason to check your health insurance. Similarly, you can actually protect yourself from... Surely you've heard stories more than once about how fraudsters can make large purchases using someone else's credit card. They're my new, I don't need a job, I don't need my parents, I've got great boots boots. How'd you pay for them? A uh, credit card. Mm -hmm. And who pays for that? Um, my father. This type of fraud appeared simultaneously with the plastic cards themselves. Only then, not computers, but phones were used for remote purchases. And while the cardholder would dictate his or her number and expiration date, the attacker could actually eavesdrop and record them for his own shopping. Now, fake websites are more often than not used to steal other people's data, right? They can simulate a bank, an online store, even an online auction. In any case, the mechanism is pretty much the same. You enter your card details without suspecting that you're on a fraudulent website. Copying the design and basic functionalities is not really difficult at all. It just remains to register a domain that is similar to the domain of the site that you're interested in. 
Now here, similar letters actually play into the hands of the scammers. And this is very interesting, right? Because in the browser address bar, it's very difficult to distinguish certain letters from others. For instance, a lowercase l looks like an uppercase i, and an uppercase o looks like a zero. So this is why the domain aloha.us is easy to replace with, well, aloha.us. Now this is the chef's choice when it comes to the menu of the Hacker House Grill. However, if people used to send fake links via email, well now they're increasingly using SMS, push notifications and short messages. And in them, they mask fake addresses using link shortening services. And therefore, always double check such links, or better yet, open a new browser tab and type in the address manually so as to not confuse the letters. But only really inexperienced scammers debit money directly from the account. And it's quite easy to detect, especially if you set up notifications for your account. Some scammers may actually start with small deposits. If you don't notice the appearance of a couple of extra dollars, then you clearly don't keep track of your account. And this is a good signal to then start withdrawing more money. Therefore, do not rejoice in unexpected money. An incomprehensible transfer is a good reason to actually contact the bank's security service. Okay, right, here's a fun story for you all. I was on a drunken night out about a year ago, and I suddenly remembered that it was my friend Joe's birthday. Now, for some reason, I thought it'd be a really good idea to buy him 10,000 Class D Instagram followers. Now, this was funny for me because these are the kind of accounts that you don't want following you. They have no followers, they have some random name, right? And their profile is a mix of capture images. Now, being drunk, I didn't realize that the site to which I was inputting my card details wasn't that kosher. Uh, but who cares, right? I was paying 20 quid to make my mate famous and piss him off a bit, or so I thought. And over the next month, I started getting mysterious withdrawals appear from my account. And after a bit of research, I found that the account that was taking my money was the same one to which I had paid for those Instagram followers. So card blocked, police contacted, yada, 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 but I don't know. At least Joe had fun deleting all of those unsavory Instagram accounts from his page. But look, obviously this was at the hand of an amateur. Serious attackers are more likely to use your data to open a new account. Now, the trouble is, that sometimes criminals can actually copy your identity without the use of your social security number, or if you're in the UK, your national insurance number. Now, I'm talking about something called social media impersonation. Okay, so scammers can actually create a fake profile of you on one of the social networks, and then they can use that to deceive your family and friends. For example, you probably have an account on, I don't know, Instagram or Facebook. What about TikTok or Likey? Okay, but then there's WeChat, Clubhouse, Caffeine or Vero. And for us oldies, there's LinkedIn and MySpace. There are really too many of these social networks to count, and your shadow double could really appear on any of them. Scammers only really need to copy the public data that's available on your main profile and just wait until one of your real acquaintances asks to be friends. And the more you write about yourself somewhere on the internet, well, the more realistic their fake portrait of you can seem. Now, I say that because a few years ago, the story of Clint Eastwood's son caught my attention. A network fraudster using the fake profile of Scott Eastwood tricked a gullible fan who agreed to help the son of the celebrity buy a plot of land in Poland. Fake Scott came up with an exciting story, including fraudulent lawyers and bank accounts in the USA, and even sent the gullible woman a copy of his passport. All of this was in pursuit of a grand total of 150,000 US dollars. And as soon as the money appeared in the account of the fraudster, Eastwood's son vanished into thin air. Damn it, we're dying here! Goodbye, peasants! Master teleported. To counteract such attempts, don't be lazy. Make sure to create a legitimate profile on all the popular social networks and claim your unique username on places such as Facebook and Instagram. Remember, these are services that only allow one. There is only one Brad J. Peak. Use identical profile photos across the board and leave a link to your main place of virtual residence for close friends and family. But even such methods will not protect you against the new fashion in online fraud. Now, with such deception, scammers combine pieces of your real data with fictional ones, and this allows them to create a reliable but independent digital identity. It's alive. Oh, it's alive. 
it's alive. It's alive, it's alive. Now let's say you're building this fraudulent avatar. It could effectively combine your real SSN number, a portrait that is generated using this person does not exist, the neural network, and maybe some credit card data that's been stolen from a Canadian student and then sold on the dark web. Now, there are also services on the web that help generate reliable phone numbers for this avatar, addresses, names, and even mailboxes for digital fakes, right? Synthetic personal data helps fraudsters to apply for things like loans, they receive bank cards using this data, they participate in trading on cryptocurrency and options exchanges, or they could even sell fraudulent courses. And with this type of fraud, there's usually no clearly defined victim, so digital identities remain undisclosed for a very long time. Now, if you're seriously concerned about the security of your data, there are a few things that you can do, specifically services you can use. There's Identity Guard, Identity Force, and ID Shield. Now, for a subscription fee, these services scan popular hacker sites on the clear net and the dark web. They can find stolen social security numbers, report database leaks with passwords, and even track social activity that is conducted on your behalf. Such services can identify synthetic identity theft from individual pieces of your information. And yet, perhaps only they can protect against the exact cloning of your digital identity. Now, the theft of digital profiles is effectively the most technologically advanced method of, well, using personal data fraudulently. You remember that I told you about search engines and large networks and how they can distinguish you from millions of other users just by your digital fingerprints. I'm talking about the characteristic features of your computer, your operating system, your browser, your online behavior, your geolocation, and even the characteristic patterns that you leave behind. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then maybe you haven't seen our video on digital fingerprints, but no worries, it's eternally on our channel, so take a look after this video. Similar digital fingerprint tracking systems are used by large banking systems online stores or even crypto exchanges and they basically compare your digital footprints your behavior and the nature of your payment transactions and if they have reason to suspect that another person is trying to use your card let's suppose that this transaction is from an unrecognized computer from another country it's for something unusual perhaps then the suspicious payment will be rejected in fact there are over 100 parameters that are analyzed to ascertain authenticity in this sense and yet, according to Juniper Research, losses from online payment fraud will reach $43 billion in 2021. But I suppose the big question here is how are scammers managing to pull off these elaborate scams? Are they in cahoots with the banks? Well, no, not at all. They just frequent these digital supermarkets where you can literally buy a digital clone of a real person. Look, this one of the shadow exchanges, Genesis Store. It has over 50,000 digital clones in its database. Now, the price of these clones is determined by the completeness of the data, so a clone can cost both $5 and also $200. The most expensive ones come complete with an online banking password, and the cheapest ones, well, they include access to a couple of social networks or web services. Now, this effectively distinguishes Genesis from sites where user data was previously sold, where sets of usernames and passwords or credit card numbers were literally listed. And here, you can buy a complete clone. The browser plugin actually allows you to download the purchase data in just one click. And then the attacker can only use a proxy server to simulate network activity from some selected location. To be honest, such digital slave markets are a serious challenge for anti-fraud systems, like the one that we offer at SumSub. And therefore, more and more services resort to video identification. In fact, there's actually a compulsory feature with verification in places such as Germany, Estonia, and also Liechtenstein. So look, if someone steals your digital identity, you're faced with some serious issues. According to ITRC data, 55% of people who faced personal data theft were forced to actually leave work. 44% lost the opportunity to find employment, and 29% actually ended up seeking state assistance. Financial troubles in this sense can last for months or even years. You'll have to restore your credit score over time and actually convince the employees of the tax administration that you weren't complicit in hiding illegal sources of income. Ruined investment accounts can put an end to your children's education and deprive you of a decent pension later in life. Moreover, if you encounter a difficult case, expert advice and legal costs can actually undermine your financial well-being. And this goes without mentioning the emotional consequences, which are not so obvious, but are also very pressing. Just imagine that on your behalf, under the guise of your photo, scammers deceived other people, maybe your friends or family. Your reputation can be damaged irreparably. 
The trust of friends and colleagues may actually never be regained. Even too much media attention can damage your career. And finally, remediless damage can be done to your health, not only your physical health, but also your mental health. Imagine that you spend several months behind bars on charges of well, major financial fraud. It's unlikely that you're going to return to freedom in the same state of mind. And now remember about the probability of medical errors if your medical history is combined with that of another person. I mean, you've got to be careful. The techniques of scammers are developing as rapidly as our digital technologies are. Protection systems can always be used against their creators. This race will continue, and to leave the race means to lose. Anyway, my name is Bradley Peake, and I'd like to personally extend my genuine gratitude for your gallantry in this gallop across the glimmering gracious ghoulscapes and the grubby and galvanized growling growths of the online jungle. So I will personally see you in the next video. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>